for the sudden death at the end. Yeah. Yeah, it was first one to show an empty mouth, and it had 15 seconds to eat it. And at 12, he was done. Yeah. So, inspired as Hot Ones, we're going to do, I found some chips. Uh, Pocky, that's the name of the company. Yeah. Um, they have five of them out. I have only can find two. Fucking Deerberg's has one, a different kind that we don't have a salsa one, but they were out today. But he was restocking the chips as I was there. I should have just asked him, but I didn't. But I'm going to go back there tomorrow because I'm going to get those bad boys because we're going to do a, a Hot Ones type chip challenge. We're gonna we're just gonna do five of them, go up the ladder to the to the, to the one chip challenge. It's gonna be awesome. I'm super excited too. <laughs> I get off early tomorrow. I'm gonna be like, yeah. Did you get off early? Yeah, three thirty, dude. It's gonna be lit. Oh, and we're gonna eat these shit. these chips, and it's gonna be awful. Uh, I've told people I'm like I'm gonna do this challenge, and they're like, oh, it's gonna be awful. I'm like, yeah. Nothing to drink. Nothing. Yeah. We should see between us two who can go the longest without getting a drink. It'll be me. You know, <laughs> It'll be me, 100%. I'm going to beat you. you. Really? After the last chips we ate? After the last chips we ate that you're also going to have on our little list before we get there. Oh, yeah. that he's talking about the haunted ghost pepper ones. They're hot. Have you ever had those? Mm, no. Damn. Well, Are they the ones upstairs? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've had them before then. No, they're not. We They're not opened. I haven't opened any of them. And they're we, in my room. We, we just, we you just said you had them before. Yeah. The way you had the last time I was here. Oh. Yeah. 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 So you did have one. And no. You were, I've had them before. Oh, you had them but before. I didn't, I didn't, I fit, that's what I was saying. If it's they're the same, hot. If yeah. it's the same chips, I know what you're talking about. They're pretty hot. Yeah. And the one chip is like 600,000 Scoville higher. So I'm ready to endure some pain. It's going to be spicy. I, t- uh, I told Brendan, I'm like, I've gone through so much like mental pain that I need some physical pain to like <laughs> level it back out and be normal again. Dude, your mind is going to be mentally fucked too after the spice levels. Maybe. You, dude, the physicalness is going to mess with the mental side. You're going to so. be a little crying bitch. <laughs> He's going to get bright red like that Budweiser sign and yeah. sweating bullets, <laughs> crying. You're going oh. <laughs> to be like Lil Yachty. On the hot ones that you showed me. Oh, dude. <laughs> Cry. You can just spit it out. Yeah. Hey, did you see that? Yeah. Oh, dude. Little Yachty as a human being is the best. <laughs> I love some of his songs, you know, but he's just such a cool person. I would love to meet Little Yachty. And that video of him doing the hot chip and just panicking and freaking out, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I can tell you right now, I would smoke Post Malone and Beer Pong. Oh yeah, do that. Have you been watching that? I haven't, but I check. I've seen some commercials well, for it. Of course, I watched the first episode because it's my boy Kells. MGK. Yeah, that's what's up. Him and uh, oh, who was his partner? It's tough off the dome, right? Yeah, yeah. When you're podcasting, it's a little tough. I forgot who was his partner. Yeah. Damn. It's okay. Wow. John anyway, because I know Megan Fox was there. What's he do? It's just beer pong. I know, but was his what did his partner do? Was he famous? Was he? Yeah, I want to say it was another rapper, but Raza. I, I, I keep thinking of it was a uh, Ty Dolla Sign and Big Sean were next. RZA, Raza. <laughs> I, I mean, listen to him. <laughs> you are never allowed to talk about Wu Tang Clan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? Guilty. It, it was uh, guilty as charged. I know who it was. It was. Uh, the guy from um, it was Tyler Yahweh or whatever uh-huh. from Stunting on You. That's oh, who yeah. it was. That's who it was partner. Tyler, that's cool. Um, I almost I saw him live, you know, but I missed him. Some, I think that's how you say his name. Oh well. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not hip. I don't know these rappers. So what do they do? They play beer pong against each other. Yeah, and <laughs> God, you hear that asshole coughing? Oh, no. Who's Post Malone's? <laughs> who's Post Malone's partner? Uh, it's like one of his boys from his entourage oh, okay. or something. Yeah. Uh, he might be in music. I don't know. He's not a rapper or anything. So no one famous, like no. just his boy. That's yeah. cool. And they play and talk to shit. Yeah, they play talk shit, and so and then uh, I think there's kind of like rules. Like if they call an island, in order to like call the island, they have to answer a question. And so because of COVID, there's like a like say this was the table. There's like a big screen here, and it's got people online, like you know their faces on there, like on Zoom, like so. To call your island shot, you have to answer like a random question from one of the fans and mm-hmm. just ask whatever weird. What shit. kind of question? Do they just do like 
trivia questions too. I would do like, uh, what's like, the square miles? Uh, like, <laughs> well, like the one chick, at, the one chick asked Post Malone whose music they like more, uh, MGK or uh, Tyler's, and it was like it's just stupid shit like that. Who's the fourteenth U.S. president? I don't fucking know. <laughs> that would be- it kind of <laughs> reminds me of like a uh, Yamama back in the day with Fez. <laughs> Will Vildoramas. Yeah, yeah. Whatever happened to that show? What was the name of it? Was it your mama or? Uh, yeah, I think it was your mama. Or, yeah, because yeah. it was just about your mama jokes. Yeah. Uh, different times, different times. Good lord. How oh, wow. Hey, guess what? We never did episode twelve. No. Oh. What up, everybody? We're here again with our boy Dan Schiller, the first returning guest. That's cool. Bam. Knocking Boom. it out. Boom. Honors. Hey. Honors. Cool shirt there. What is that? Thanks, brother. My local tattoo shop. Not my shop, yeah. but, you know. Shop well, you I, have gotten quite... Shop I go to. You've got a lot of tattoos. Yeah. How many tattoos you got? Uh, 16, 17, I think. Yeah. You know, it's funny because when you say that out loud, it doesn't really sound like a lot. Like, 17 a lot, but... I kind of felt like I was, you were going to say more than that. Well, and because you got a whole damn sleeve. But, and you gotta, but like, <laughs> I count the sleeve as one. Yeah, yeah. True. So, yeah, yeah. I mean. He's got some big pieces <laughs> Yeah. the 17. Funny story, dude. That was another time, because I went with you to get that outline. Do you remember that? Yeah. Remember me getting sick as fuck? Uh-huh. Dude, that was another was moment. Was it for the... I th- no, I think you came with me for my ones on my shoulders, I think. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was the mom and dad ones. Yeah. Do you still have those, or did you cover them? <laughs> I don't nope. know if he covered them or they not. They just disappeared, ladies and gentlemen. No, I don't know if he covered them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know. If, I forgot if he had covered them. Cause... No. Anyway. I, yeah, I still got them. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. even the sleeve, I wrapped the sleeve around Are you sure it. it wasn't for the sleeve? It was for the mom and dads. Anyway, that latex yeah. fucked me up. We were in yeah. there for, like... How long was that? That was a whole day. You weren't in there very long. <laughs> Until I started feeling started like shit. Feeling like shit, yeah. Yeah, dude. I didn't realize that just being in a tattoo parlor can fuck you up if you're yeah. allergic to latex. Yeah, dude, flex these tattoos. So, just wrapped around it instead of covering it. Give a little, yeah. Gotta have mom on you. Yeah. But yeah, I was with yeah. you when you got that. How old were you when you got that? Um, I was still 18. Still 18? Yeah. How old were you when you got your first tattoo? My 18th birthday. And it was your back? Yeah. I got the one across my shoulders. Wow. And then I was on a trend like every six months mm-hmm. for like two years there. I got so a tattoo. And your legs are pretty tatted. Yeah. Because I went my back and then I did my shoulders and then I started the sleeve and that took a little while. Then I was in there every like two weeks getting more work done on it. So... Yeah, and then you have some sick work. Everything after that, everything on my legs, all been one sitting. Just oh yeah, then just wham, one at a time. Wham bam, spontaneous combustions. Yep. See, lots of money. I was the kind of kid where I'm like, oh, I couldn't wait to get tattoos. I only have one single tattoo. Yep. It's because of that damn brand, man. When I had my friends brand my arm with a fucking metal hanger, snipped it, <laughs> and they made a cross, and and then Nick Cap off. Stuck it in my arm, and he got fucking scared because he went to pull it out, and he got stuck. And then he lets go. It's still hot as hell. And he's like, it's stuck, it's stuck. I'm like, oh, it's still fucking hot. And I had to pull it out myself. Ugh. Yeah, dude. But brands just made me realize shit's permanent. Make sure you know what the fuck you want. And then ever since then, and since I have so much regret in that brand, it's I, it's like, man, I overthink tattoos. Yeah. So I re- like I'm like, man, why can't I just be someone that gets tattoos? Because uh. if we made it as podcasts, I tell Brandon all the time, it would be bad. Because I'm bald too. Like, oh shit. <laughs> like Post Malone has inspired me. Oh, I would look Jesus. just fucking like Post Malone. Swear to God. You look like Bam Bam Bigelow <laughs> no, from the '90s uh, in wrestling yeah. with the fucking mm-hmm. flames on top of your head. But I would be thinking so hard about every single one of them. <laughs> it would be hell. Just don't get a spider web off top. <laughs> That's all Dude, I can say. Post looks sick. No, I mean, really, I just decide by, like, if I get an idea, and then, like, if that idea just keeps coming back to me. Mm-hmm. And then, like, like, my most recent one, I thought about it for probably, like, a year and a half. I constantly, like, kept, I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. Like, yeah, I'm going to put this here. Like, yeah, I'm going to put this one here to match this one. That's what's up. And then after a while, I was like, yeah, all right. And, like, obviously, I want to get that, so. 
Went, took the ID to my guy. Knocked it out of the park. You gonna ever get tattoos, buddy? Am I ever gonna get tattoos? If I if we get famous, I'm gonna get a neck tattoo. Like how you did in California? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I had a sticker tattoo on California, <laughs> and I liked it though. I what? thought it was cool. Like what? I'd be like, oh man, I was like thinking, oh my god, if I had a real neck tattoo, I think it'd be really cool. What'd it say? It was like a fucking eagle, dude. Oh shit! <laughs> like a big ass eagle <laughs> right on my neck. And I was like, dude, I actually want like a fucking eagle on my neck. I think it would be lit. Get you that typical rose. But I don't want to do that for a while. That's something later. Nah. You got plenty of time. Yeah. We but had we, we had one of those nights where you look at the bill at the end of the night and you're like, oh, fuck, what have we done? <laughs> We're out in Lake Tahoe celebrating. And we go, Brennan, go put this tattoo on. And sure enough, he puts that fucking thing on. Then he's out dancing with these on. Pe- people thought it was real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's when it was so cool. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty good at first. And eventually it was like washed out. Start falling off, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was tough, dude. Yeah, no. Yeah, they're definitely permanent. Yeah. Have, would you ever consider tattooing your face? No. That's where you stop? No face. Mm-hmm. Is that the only place you wouldn't tat? You think you're cool tattooing everywhere else? Uh, Yeah, I mean, I have the idea of doing like a kind of like a suit like full oh, legs shit, full dude. arms like i don't know I you did, look like a ron and samurai kind of <laughs> shit yeah. going on uh like i did my first one on my back and i still to this day like even forget about it sometimes unless i catch a glimpse of it like hopping out of the shower or something mm-hmm. so like part of me for getting them done is like the enjoyment of showing them off but like also seeing it myself so i don't know if i'd really want to put all that time and money into my back and like never get like never get to see it as much as I should. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, I know having something awesome back there would still be just as cool, even if not seeing it. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I'll probably do something eventually, but that's on the back burner because I got other stuff I want to do first, but yeah, no face, probably no, like no front of the throat. Like I might do something small on the back of my neck, but other than that, no face tattoos. No, no face. <laughs> that Ta- might change one day. Want to do my hands? Same. Maybe fingers. I don't know. I don't know if I'll do. I don't know if I'll do the top of my feet or not. Uh. Should I go like man. little peep and just get cry baby? Yeah. Mama's boy. D- oh yeah, mama's boy on both. Just mama oh, and then cool. boys on the side. <laughs> <laughs> that would be like double eyebrows. That yeah. look kind of weird. Just shave your. Eye- got, it's gotta be one side. You gotta shave your eyebrows and put mama's boy. In oh my. Instead of eyebrows, bro. I shaved my eyebrows when I was like in third grade. You can still tell. Uh, I <laughs> probably, but my dad tells me just goes, hit that self conscious yeah, button right yeah. there. No, eyebrows. Eyebrows don't bother me today. Nah. I when girls are like, oh, our eyebrows. I'm like. Do you ever judge a girl by her fucking eyebrows? I would like would never be like, oh my god, her eyebrows. Only if it's only an eyebrow. <laughs> yeah, it's the unibrow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like the dodgeball chick. <laughs> yeah. well, well, you just help her shave it once a week. What if she doesn't want to shave it because you're proud of it? Then you go and you and but you love her. You go, all right, damn it. You say, I accept you for you. I accept you for you. But you're not my forever person. <laughs> <laughs> We we're gonna part ways. <laughs> Unlike your eyebrows. <laughs> oh my god. Ooh, ooh, huh. ooh, ooh. We were talking earlier about kind of this subject, but I wanted to bring uh-huh. it back up. Mara Gomez. This was today. Tell me your thought. Give me your opinion on this. This is kind of a soft sore subject. Um. The so she's the first fir- documented did- case of a medical marijuana death. No. Oh. Oh, no, no, no. The f- ready for this? That was my guess. See, so no one still died from weed. Yet. I'm gonna give my first little opinion. This is some Eric Cartman shit, I think. Oh Christ! And I might have offended some people right there. But Mara Gomez, first trans woman to play football in Argentina. Hi, what do you think about that? Well, and we're speaking Argentina, so we mean football. So we're speaking soccer. soccer. Yeah, 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 Mar- my yeah. My bad. Yeah, football. Um, playing. So this is um. Yeah, what do you mean oh, by yeah. trans? So, okay, so transgender. So we're speaking, this is a man now playing women's soccer. Yes. That, I don't know. It's, I feel, so, okay. In a sport, I feel like in a sport like soccer, 
or baseball. Not, I mean, which you can still argue that soccer and basketball are still just as physical in a sense as football, but it's not like a fight. So, like, I think girls could play, it can be vice versa as well. Like, I think a girl could play men's soccer or play baseball with men or. A lot easier than yeah. these other physical but sports. But I like feel football. like, I feel like a guy, a guy playing American football with all women is just as unfair as a woman playing and I mean that's not to say anything about a woman that's in shape and you know the same size as some of these guys. It's just I'm speaking in general. Yeah. But that to me, I, it's, I mean, for a sport that's kind of compatible that they can compete either way. I mean, I'm not too upset with it. Mm-hmm. But like, if it was an MMA fight and there's a guy fighting a chick now, that come on, that's just stupid. Like, so let me tell you, let me throw a story at you then. So, uh. Little trans woman grows up wanting to be a fighter. Yeah. You gotta tell her no, she can't do it. Because she's because she's a trans. She's a girl, so she's born a girl but wants to be a boy. Yeah. And wants to be a UFC fighter as a boy. Yeah. She just fights the women. <laughs> it's such a tough subject. Because I mean Dude. in a sport where you have both divisions, I mean that's like that'd be um like, not to na- take any, like, who, like, what, Tisha Torres and somebody you're dating, two UFC fighters, right? Mm-hmm. I forget who. Off the dome of my head, I forget too. But, but yeah. that'd be, like, one of them, that'd be, like, one of them, like, Fuck, who was tomorrow that? coming out, um like, that actress, um now actor, just did from the Umbrella Academy. Yeah. Oh, my God. That'd be the same thing. Ooh, so, right. that'd be the same thing, Elliot. like, say, just, let's just use Tisha Torres for an example. Say tomorrow she comes out on the headlines and says she now wants to identify as a man named whatever. That's fine. Mm -hmm. You're still fighting in the women's division. Mm -hmm. You can identify as a man, but you're not going to fight in the men's division. If you're a guy that wants to identify as a woman, that's fine. But you're still going to fight in the men's division. What about this, Dan? I would compromise this. If you're willing to do gender reassignment, even if your motives are dirty and they're for a competitive edge, I think you actually deserve to compete still because you went through gender reassignment just to compete better and, like, be the best. Like, oh, my God, people respect uh, – like, there's there's those – there's this camp of people that, that, like, you know, respect those competitive mindsets. Like Jordan, you know, like he's. It's uh, I I so your argument you're trying to say it's kind of like somebody taking steroids, like instead yeah, yeah. of instead of taking the steroid route to be better than everybody, <laughs> I'm gonna take yeah. the transgender route to yeah. just be a guy playing fucking fighting women. Like, like I wouldn't even look down on that mindset because I respect that they're going to that level to be the best. Well, that's what I'm. That's you're, crazy. You're well, being no. the worst fucking best is what you're being. That's what I'm saying about Eric Cartman in South Park when he's trying to goes into the Special Olympics and then he still ends up being worse because he's Eric Cartman and he's really big a fan. Yeah, it's like the ringer. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that shit's, that shit's so fucked up. A lot of people, well, yeah, so in that sense, a lot of people were getting pissed off. But then again, so I saw this really cool video about a uh, transgender woman who was transgendering into a male and it was it took eight years and woman in the beginning of the fucking video and male male, like there's no difference he even got he even got balls you know and he went and he took the you know all the hormones and bullshit and it's like damn i understand it now like i get it if that's how you truly feel inside yeah yeah but if there's an eric cartman motherfucker out there that's like okay okay i'm gonna be a girl and you know some when when they finally have heavyweight women fighting and there's some dude that's like okay i'm gonna go fuck up some chicks and then goes through that process some eric cartman shit people probably hate me for that but fuck those guys True. <laughs> yeah you know what honestly in all fairness i'm for like transgender people playing in sports man not holding them back in barriers 100%. but they're yeah, the i'm not even gonna say but that's just crazy to think that there might be that one person who's fucking crazy yeah. like that but, but i would still respect that person at the end of the day because they're so competitive that they would do that i'm like you would do that because of that not because of the real reasons people do it i'd be like that's crazy i'm telling you right now and it's gonna be evidence on this podcast mm-hmm. it started with the bathrooms we're gonna have transgender leagues in the mm-hmm. future <laughs> like for your sports not gonna be men's league and women's league there's gonna be a trans league to where everyone plays together it's a mixed team 
Yeah. The L.A. Lakers and the Sparks or whatever the female they yeah. join together. You got one team. The L.A. Larks. Yeah. I mean, I actually, I'm down for that. That'd be legit. Yeah, like mm-hmm. some co-ed volleyball. Yeah, you got co-ed basketball. You gotta have three yeah. guys and two and girls football. on the court at one time. And football and stuff I'm like that. It. Some shit. But you could always just make like special leagues for that kind of stuff too. True. You know. Like what like, the Rock's doing with the XFL? Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, if somebody, like, if somebody from, whatever, Bellator, King of the Kings, somebody just wants to do a f- affiliation thing, open weight class, you want to have a heavyweight fight a flyweight, and they want to sign the contracts, by all means. Oh, so you're talking some OG do uh, you, UFC shit? Do you, like, yeah, no rules, wear your fucking that, tennis shoes, like, whatever. Like, then you can have a guy and a chick fight. You know, after the- sign a contract, you agreed to it. Do whatever the hell you want. I'll watch it on TV. Why can't we have some legit backyard fighting? Yeah, I think that'd be cool. Like they did in the UFC game, and then you know how like back in the well, day, you know, YouTube Kimbo fights. Well, well yeah, like, like uh, Dada Five Thousand, like his uh, yeah. put down the guns, put up the f- fist or something like that. Oh, they, what is that? Uh, like where he went around to like different hoods and like gathered up uh, like the members. I mean, he did it in his own neighborhood first, I believe. Mm-hmm. Like gathered up the local community and was basically getting the kids off the streets. And instead of shooting each other, they were fighting. They were boxing each other in a ring. See, that's dope. And so it was rival rival members of the gangs would show up and they would fight other members of the gangs in boxing fights. That's and so then cool. that was it. There was no guns or anything allowed on the premises. Like it was clean the streets up. It was something that they did. It was, I think it might be on Netflix. I'm, I think it was at one point maybe. There was like a little documentary on it. I'm sure you could probably find it on YouTube. Mm. But yeah. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Dada. What about like a Karate Kid type movie where like it's like a Dada 5000 is like the Mr. Miyagi though in the movie. Oh, and he's teaching kids to get, and there's like one kid you really root for. It's the, oh fuck. I got to write this down. This is a movie right here, dude. Get to work, boys. Get to scripting. Oh my God. <laughs> the amount of movie ideas this guy has in a day. It's outstanding. <clears throat> Hey, man, you got to have ideas. Oh, yeah. A million write, he writes them down. We write them down. Hell, yeah. We're going to be dishing them. But, yeah, dude, I want to get to a big reason why I want to talk to you today, too. Is, and it's about you being a chef. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How, when did you really – because, you know, both of you, you got your heads on straight, and I admire that about you guys because <laughs> something in life that I've just had such a hard time with is finding my path. Where do I belong? Where do I go? What do I do? I have a whole bunch of skills. I have degrees. But where do I go? What do I do? To whereas you guys, you guys kind of pretty much know a path you're on. You're really good at banks, so you're doing your bank thing. And you know you don't want to do that all the time, but you're writing your screenplays. We're doing our podcast. But like Dan, you knew when did you know you wanted to be a chef? I don't know. Uh exactly really when it clicked in. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, originally I finished high school. I went to college to be a high school math and science teacher. Really? Uh, well, yeah, I went to college on a baseball scholarship. Uh, and that's what the, my major that I was studying was secondary education. Were you pitching in college too? Yeah. Just like high school? Yeah. That's sick. And then, um, fast forward, not too far into the year, I got hurt, Mm -hmm. uh, and asked to redshirt. And I decided not to. I left the team, uh-huh. and then, so I pretty much didn't go to school anymore because I didn't. I didn't have. I didn't really care to go to school without baseball. Like baseball was the only reason I was there, and I couldn't play. Mm-hmm. I didn't care to go to school, and so pretty much resorted back to I got to get a job now. Mm-hmm. And I've, I mean, from the time I, I think fifteen years old, my first job was at McDonald's. Uh, my mom came up with me and signed off on a little waiver. I work after McDonald's. Uh, I worked at McDonald's. Uh, I think after that, I went to when I went to McAllister's there. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, because I was there through high school because I was I had half days because I was working there senior year. And then you went to the Cordon Bleu, right? Yeah. Yeah. What? When did? How old were you went when you went there? Uh, so we graduated in 2011. Did a year of college, um, and then that fall I went to culinary school. Mm-hmm. And it was only. So it was six six week programs of classes, like mm-hmm. stages. So each one is how it went. So whatever, six times six, uh, however many months that is. Thirty six months. Yeah. Thirty six weeks. Oh yeah. Yeah. Silly bitch. 
anything. So <laughs> no, nine kidding. months. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was only nine months of schooling. Mm-hmm. Um, Which isn't bad. That's pretty. That's pretty. Like if you're someone who's like later in life, that's yeah. manageable. Yeah, and I was. I mean, I was actually. I was looking out of the state. Mm-hmm. But it was actually two thousand dollars cheaper to stay here. Oh. So that was kind of a little nice and convincing, but yeah. it was also so I hated school. Kind of as w- did we all. Kind of weird that I was going to be a teacher. Yeah. But. <laughs> well, teaching's cool. Yeah. Learning's, I mean, learning's unless you don't like learning about something. Yeah. It sucks. But like I looked at the other culinary schools around, and like you still had to do gen ed. It's like you still had math class and stuff like that. Mm. Uh. But out at Le Cordon Bleu, it was just straight hands on. Like we would do a couple days of notes, like in the beginning, like going over some stuff. Uh, but it was really pretty much just one day. The uh, chef would demonstrate, and then the next day we would do it, and that would be our that'd be our assignment was doing what he did the day before. We get graded on our cuts and taste and everything like that learning all the basics yeah you ever see anyone cry in the kitchen all the time like it torn to pieces in the kitchen uh yeah after (laughs) so (laughs) after i gotta hear it after school i worked uh in a country uh, private dining club uh in clayton and it was french ran and so all the chefs were from france oh wow Uh, pretty thick accents and uh yeah Pretty much got called everything you could get called by a person there, yeah. And yeah, I mean, I like to t- I like to tell people that like because you always like you look at um like everybody always looks at Gordon you know from Hell's Kitchen Gordon Ramsay just fucking screaming at people and laying into them mm-hmm. and like that's just TV and like movies. Uh, I think the best rendition of what an actual like high level intense kitchen is like. Is burnt with Bradley Cooper. Oh yeah. If you watch, that's a good movie. If you watch that movie, that in a high level kitchen, that's the intensity. Like, that's how plating is done. That's how service is ran. It's that intense, that on point, Mm -hmm. like to a T. It's almost military style. What about? Have you seen the movie Chef? Yeah. Is that another good? Yeah, I mean, then like the aspects that are portrayed in that, like with. A chef having the ability to do so much more and wanting to do so much more, but being held down from whatever director of this restaurant saying, no, this is our image or this is what we do. Oh, this, it's, is our menu. this is our menu. This is what you're going to put out when that chef could know a hundred times more things than you and could just take that one thing and tweak it that little bit. Mm-hmm. And just up its value so much more. Mm-hmm. But a place gets a name and an image. And no, it's us. It's not you. It's not. I can call somebody in five minutes and have them here in an hour. And they'll cook this menu. Damn, that's kind of rough, yeah. It's so. like they stifle <clears throat> It's like they stifle your creativity, right? Yeah. They're like, you can't, you have to, wow. But so. at the same time, there's places that are, do whatever you want. It, mm-hmm. This is your menu. Like, we own it, but, you know, we're going to. We're going to pay the bills. We're going to run the advertising. The menu's you. Mm-hmm. And uh-huh. those are the good places to work for. Unless you like working in the machine style industry of just being doing what you're told and having no creativity. Yeah. Like, that's that's one of the fun things about it. I mean, I do the same thing every single day, but it's always different. I'm always – it's always different. Like it's never – it never turns out exactly the same. There's always a different way to do it or a different way to try it. It's, that's pretty cool. I mean, you can always make new stuff just by doing one thing different. Yeah. And one thing about being a chef is I love when when I love it when a job you can apply at your, your home. You know what I mean? Yeah. You Although can, I don't do much home cooking. <laughs> I know, which is funny because you're a chef and I get it. Yeah. But you know how. Oh, yeah. And if there's a special time in your life where you're having some friends over and you want to cook for them, yeah. you're going to make some bomb-ass food. Holidays, stuff, so stuff I like love that. that kind of shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because oh, that's yeah. something I'm kind of like. Well, Ricky, that's why I got the movie theater job, and I, and then I, you know, I got so far, and I couldn't go any further without having to move out of state. So. Yeah. After you got uh your, what is it? Is it a degree or what is it called when you get your license? Um, I have a. Certificate. 
I want to say, I think I have an associate's in the culinary arts. Oh, that's what's up. I think is how it's phrased. So after you got that, where'd you start working? Uh, after that, um, I stayed. So the final six weeks of school in order to graduate, you have to work X amount of hours in the industry. Mm-hmm. Like that's the final like test. Mm-hmm. Um, and you do it for free. Damn. Yeah, that's right. Well, you can do it for free unless like, unless you're already working somewhere that qualifies for the uh, requirements for it, mm-hmm. which I thought I was, but I wasn't. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went to a place and just basically offered, uh, it's called staging. Um, you can do it anywhere. You can walk into a restaurant and do it for one night. Just kind of, I mean, not anywhere, but mm-hmm. higher up places will let play people come in and stage for a night or two just to kind of see how things are and what goes on. Mm-hmm. Um, but so, yeah, I basically did that for six weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I was done and after they finished out my paperwork, they did like a review on me and the uh, executive chef offered me a job. Dope. And so I stayed there for a so little. So it paid off. Yeah. Definitely paid off. Yeah, I mean, I worked six weeks for free to graduate school. But then once I finished that six weeks and graduated school, I got offered the job that I up. was doing. So then I started getting paid. Yeah. And I was getting paid pretty good money. <laughs> and you were you worked there for a good amount of time, didn't you? I was there a little over a year. A little over a year? Yeah. But I was still young and dumb. Yeah. I was only 19. So. So I still wanted to Damn. party, hang out with my friends, do stupid stuff. That was that long ago. Yeah. Time flies, brother. Yep. Fuck. Yeah, because I that remember. That seems like some yesterday shit. Because I remember we were in the shift, so I was like. When they're like, yeah, that feels like yesterday. Shit, that feels like yesterday. Damn. Because I remember in the shifts, then chef come around and, what do you want to drink? Uh-huh. He's like, oh, I'm good. I got whatever. He's like, no, what do you want to drink? Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, well, I'm not 21. I'm not going to say it again. Okay, well, I'll take Jack and Coke. Oh, ooh, <laughs> that's what's, that's cool. So, I mean. the are going to fucking drink this. The, yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, it's you're either going to get a drink or you're not. Uh-huh. Like, I'm not going to ask you again. Like, <laughs> I don't care. I don't care how old you are. You're here. You just worked all night with us through that shit storm of service. So, mm-hmm. you know, you deserve a drink. And then, so how long you been at the place? Where are you working at now? Uh, I'm at Eleven Eleven Mississippi now. It'll be two years in February. Damn. So. And then, so is that the same catering place as Brandon Cook's wedding? Or no. That? So that was uh, I was working at a event center. I was working for Andres. Local, oh, okay. Local. Because dude, company. you made some bomb ass food that <laughs> night. It was so cool that you were the. I know it's just coincidence too. It was I didn't even re- I didn't. Well, I realized it earlier that week when we were going through our paperwork. I just uh-huh. happened to look up at the names, uh-huh. and I was like, "Oh shoot!" And then I looked over at the my schedule on what I because I'm I decided what I worked each week. Uh-huh. I was like, "Oh shoot!" There we go. You broke it. Now we're back. You broke it. Yeah. Oh. Well. God damn. I fixed it. We're good. God damn. It. Yeah, we're good. Just for a split second. Uh, Rewind. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Dude. I'm learning so much doing all this podcasting stuff. There's just so many, even when the thing about podcasting is even when you have everything set up perfectly, there's so many types of things that can go wrong. A saved file can go corrupt and that just fucks your oh, whole yeah. day. You know, something in a program might go wrong for a split second. Like it just did. Just, just curveballs. Yeah. yeah. Feel, being on the high road, then just a little, like you're in a fight, you're doing pretty good. And then the guy kicks you in the nuts and you're like, fuck, huh? Or like you're out hitting golf balls and you go to pick one up and then your buddy hits you with a fucking golf ball. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah, that, that <laughs> I was, was trying, that bastard. Yeah, I was trying to do hit it me. so fast. <laughs> Isn't it funny when your kids and your dudes how you're just such an ass? Like you just, I guess maybe I still am a little bit. But we were rough to each other when we were kids. Like, and we get seriously hurt. If we got some, if we got injured the way we did when we were kids today, fuck. I just want to be able to walk as long as I can walk right and do things right and be able to bend certain ways. I'm gonna convince you to come to jujitsu with me. You're Dude, gonna come one day, man. You're I do want to do it. Um, hold on, hold on. That shit'll make you hurt though. Uh, my hips, uh, my hips hurt in places I didn't know they could hurt. <laughs> I'm trying yeah. to throw my legs in weird spots. Yeah, dude. Uh that's the thing. You got to be flexible. I'm getting old. Uh, I'm not 17, 18 anymore. 27 now. The thing that I love about jujitsu is that it seems like it's such a life changing thing and that it's not just about submitting people and beating people in competition, but what jujitsu does to you as a person. That's the shit I admire. Like you get a whole new respect level, um, understanding, 
and you can like phys- like when you can defend yourself and p- and then like you go to they, everyone has all this respect there you know no one's there. it doesn't seem like and most of the time people want to be there to hurt you you want to go there and learn and yeah. th- and then be there for each other and the whole belt system i love it I, i'm like i just love that kind of stuff it's goals it's yeah. almost it's like a video game but real life you know and you get better at something so dude one day i will definitely get a jujitsu right now with covid i was even more <laughs> with you just you know coming over and everything but we'll get in you you know like i scrubbed and desanitized i don't know man toe. who fuck it's just so weird how no one like we don't even no one really knows and the whole vaccine shit but yeah so what's been the biggest struggle so far this year with covid and being a chef uh just the restrictions on dining and really uh, just people overall mm-hmm. wanting to be out. Yeah. Because uh, I'd say uh, where I'm at now, uh, it's in my restaurant now, um, our clientele before COVID was oh. on the on the older side, um, which since COVID hit, um, obviously that was the group of people not going out as much. Mm-hmm. Um so we saw a decline in customers um also just with people and businesses not being open around us um a lot of our lunch business was business lunches and stuff of that like meetings um without people being in the office that's not happening in a restaurant it's all being done over the computer so that goes our business and revenue right there from that portion of people not uh being out working Mm -hmm. um but so one thing we did do we uh kind of revamped the menu um sat down and kind of geared it towards um the generation that is being out and about now Mm -hmm. Uh, not really trying to get more hip but uh uh, just appealing to the younger crowd a little bit more than the more sophisticated palates i guess is what you would say yeah what do you mean by the more sophisticated (laughs) palates you're older i mean i just take uh take drinking for instance you know you're not gonna find too many uh 20 and 30 year olds drinking a nice aged scotch over there you know they're still gonna be down in warm beer from the frat party <laughs> so yeah, yeah. somebody coming out for a nice steak and dinner with some good sauce and whatnot you're gonna that's what i mean by the more sophisticated yeah. palate you know that's and not to say that we're dumbing down our cooking or anything it's just relating more to the trends of you know yeah. what people you know like what people of that age group are gonna eat like you know Older people like, you know, more game stuff, you know, rabbit, stuff like that, you know. Younger people might still look at that as ill or some oh. shit. <laughs> Damn. Like, I mean, look at California. I mean, do you think you guys would be afloat if we went through another lockdown? Uh, it's questionable. Yeah. Because that's what's, dude, what's, what's huge is the movie theaters are getting screwed and yeah. restaurants, little small businesses. So yeah. It's like, I really, I mean, I'm, I'm don't agree with it. Mm-hmm. I really think it should be, I don't know. I feel like it should be a matter. It should be like enter at your own risk. Yeah. You know, you know, it's like if you're going skydiving, if you're getting in a, on a four wheeler, if you're doing anything, you're riding a roller coaster, you know, the danger you're putting yourself into and you do it every day. Anyway, it's just walking out your front door to go drive in traffic. Yeah. It should be the same thing right now is. There's a sickness out there, just like there is every other day of the year forever ago. There's always sicknesses. There's millions of them out there. Yeah. But, hey, there's one out there right now that's contagious. You know, the older people, the your weakened immune system people, mm-hmm. you're not going to do well if you get this. Yeah. So, you know, you might want to take precautions stay and home. stay home. If you got to go out, wear a mask, you know, let them know. Everywhere's still open. Every business is still open. People, you can still go out. If you want to catch it, all right, you're going to get it. Yeah, you know, and it's on you. You might die. It's your choice. Yeah. Go ahead, die. Bye, stupid. And then, in, and then, <coughs> my bad. No, my bad. Go ahead. No, you're good. So it should be choice. And so, rest everywhere can be open still. Mm-hmm. The fact that it's the way it's being done is shut everything down. And now all of these people. And I guess really the argument is give it a chance. 
let it be a choice if people want to stay home or go out. And if people stay open and just people aren't going out and then the businesses go under Mm -hmm. because it's just people aren't going out and it's dead, then okay. But because you're closing it and forcing someone whose only source of income is this building, which I still owe rent on this building that I'm making my money from, so I have to pay that. I have this mortgage I have to pay that comes from this building. I have this car payment I have to pay that comes from this building. You close this damn building yeah they're fucked i can't do anything well at least give me the option exactly to stay open if people want to come let them be able to because you know how many people right now want to go somewhere want to go to the gym but they can't they should be able to as much automated shit as we have nowadays you're telling me you can't have an automated check-in and check out at the gym yeah you don't need to have a staff member there Turn mm-hmm. the fucking lights on. Let everybody work out. No one's in there. Turn them off. Kind of a big thing going on right now. Um, what do you think about this? Do you think if you work for, like, in I guess a chef, this might come down to you. But if you work for a place, do you think they should be forcing you to get the vaccine? See, I feel if it comes down the line that it's um, in order to keep working here. Yeah, in order to keep your job, you have to get, get a vaccine. Get the vaccine. Unless, You're going to be like deuces? Unless I get in writing in a contract from the owners of the company, mm-hmm. the, the main who's going to take the most blunt for this if anything happens. Mm-hmm. Unless I get in writing in a contract that from now until the day I die, including if I die because of whatever reasons from getting this vaccine, mm-hmm. that they're accountable and that – They'll whatever throughout the process if something starts like if you develop whatever from it Mm -hmm. like you know you see all the stuff with asbestos and the mesothelioma whatever something like that if that stuff starts developing you're paying my medical bills or if i die suddenly because of it you're paying my kids tuition or some shit so i was telling brandon i'm like what if like 0.003 percent of the people who take it go blind yeah and i'm like you're one of them Exactly, and so if I'm if, that'd be horrible. If my employer, I'd rather just get fucking COVID, man. And if my employer, I'm sure it's not going to happen to anyone. And if my employer says you have to get this shot in order to work here, mm-hmm. then no, I'm not going to do it. That's crazy because that's a big talk, right? That's a big topic I'm not getting right the now. Vaccine anyway, so I might be jobless. But that's pretty crazy. Yeah, no, I mean if if you'll give me in writing that for whatever that point oh three percent chance I might go blind if I got in writing that. I'll be taken care of. Dude, I wanted to talk about the fights, but we don't have enough time. That's a good card this weekend. Yeah. Three fights have already been out. Davison Figueredo versus Brandon Moreno. <laughs> Brandon Moreno. Moreno. I know, but it's just Brandon Moreno sitting next to you. It's Brendan Moreno. If he's fighting, you better get training. Who, who do you guys think is going to win? To- so, Tony Ferguson versus Charles Oliveira. So Charles, <laughs> o- he's on a seven-fight win streak. He's a killer. To- but here's the thing. He's beat good guys, right? He's beat good guys. I think Tony's beat the better. Like, his list of people he's beat is better. Yeah. And, yeah, Sean was talking to me today on, on the Twitch. And when, when we gamed, he was asking about it. Has How much damage did Tony take in his last fight with Justin? Is he fucked? I kind of have a feeling it's Tony Ferguson. The dude's kicking him steel bars and shit. Yeah. I think he's coming back just how he was. You know, maybe he can't take a shot as well, you know, but yeah. So Charles is on a seven fight win streak. Personally, I'm going with my man, Tony Ferguson. Charles Oliveira. I'm going to go Charles Oliveira. Charles Oliveira. Ooh. What do you think? Am I going to, I got to split the room? <laughs> oh, um, well, what do I think? And what's probably going to happen? Tony I, decision. I think I, I see Oliveira subbing him. Subbing him? Oh, in the that third. break my heart. <laughs> subbing him in like the third or the fourth. Oh. Is it a five-rounder? No, it's a three. It's okay, a three. yeah. I can, do, I can see Oliveira subbing him, uh-huh. but I'm, what I'm going to say is going to happen is going to be a Tony decision. Split. All right. That's what I think. I think it's fair. What do you think the final decision is for that fight? Charles... Oliver is gonna win by a knockout. By knockout. And oh, uh, in the fifth round. He was getting, dude. He was getting hit so hard. He didn't. 
Sometimes these guys when they get beat up so bad they come back they didn't get slept. Yeah. But I'm telling you, Tony Ferguson, the man. You know who else is fighting? Well, Kevin Holland, I know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Trailblazer. Ronaldo Souza. Shakri. We saw him fighting Kansas City. Alligator man. And then yeah. JDS is fighting. Really? Yeah. Unless he got canceled. There's been so many fights being canceled these days. Shit. I don't know. I don't either. And who opens the night? Chase Hooper. I'm excited. He lost his last fight, but he's young. He's I like him. I like I like him who he is. I li- I dig his fight style, you know. He's kind of remind don't say it. <laughs> Reminds me of Ben Askren. <laughs> but I think he can work on a stand up. He's got time. He's got time. He's got time to make that stand up game strong, just as strong as his fucking grappling. So, I'm rooting for Chase. I don't know who's fighting. Peter Barrett. I don't know who the fuck that is. No, I'm neither. Sorry. Sorry, Peter. No clue. Respect. Sorry, brother. Yeah. You made it there. So yeah. you're somebody. Mackenzie Dern's fighting. Maybe not. COVID. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't think they are. I they think, got they got cut. I think the Dern fight is off. I think. Damn. I could be wrong. Damn. Michelle. What they? Michelle Waterson got. The uh, UFC 257, she's off. Actually, I thought I saw a female fight off the card. Well, if they were the only one, I don't know. So I don't even want to read this list. It could be all. It's freaking Tuesday, <laughs> Friday. Who knows? It, Cub Swanson may or may not be on the card. We'll find out. It could be anybody. Yeah. But yeah, Dan, yeah. thanks for coming on our show, brother. No problem. Thanks for having me, fellas. It's been a great time. Always. Yeah. First returner. Yeah. We'll get you. Always. Yeah, always. I need a patch or like a flag. I need, I need, need some. I respect So that. next time I'm here, I can just set it right in front of me. I respect just be that. Like, you see that? I appreciate yeah. it. We're yeah. going to have you on many more times, brother. Oh, yeah, definitely. Everyone have a good day. Boy. Deuces.